Uh, should I just start whenever? Yes. Okay. So, I'm an angry black feminist, so today I'm talking about police brutality. And I'm going to start off with a video. It's going to skip around a lot, so just heads up. Call in the mic. Okay. What's your mom's name? I just want you all to stay alert and stay aware to the struggles right outside your door. Stay woke. I established myself as a firm, confident member of the Black Lives Matter movement the first time I saw a video of someone being brutally assaulted by a police officer. Before that, I was hearing about the shootings and the forceful arrests. When I heard about George Zimmerman being acquitted of all charges for murdering some poor soul in a hoodie named Trayvon Martin, I was disgusted. But all of that seemed so far out of my spectrum. In 2012, I was just entering high school. We had a black president. And even though I lived in a predominantly white city, I never really experienced severe racism. I hung out with who I hung out with. I did what I did. I was only 15. I didn't realize it then, but my beliefs were becoming aligned with my surroundings. I viewed this attack and was wrongly informed about it by the people around me, saying that he must have been justified and shooting this poor kid. Because living where we do, even in Canada, even with the broad spectrum that is media today, in 2012, we really couldn't understand the gravity of the situation because we weren't really living it. The video I first saw of Michael Brown in 2014 was taken on the infamous police brutality city of Ferguson, Missouri. It was shot on a low quality cell phone camera and it was of him turning around towards a policeman in question after getting shot in the hand and then the back and raising his arms and proclaiming his in innocence with, I don't have a gun, and then getting shot in the chest again several times. After I watched that, I immediately went downstairs and told my mother what I had just seen. At that point in my life, I felt like I understood the world a bit better. I understood that people did have hate in their hearts, and I knew that not everything was fair, and racists were real people, not just hicks on TV. They were politicians, people's grandmothers, our neighbors, I just didn't know that the people I should fear, the most brutal undercover racists, are the ones I thought would protect me if I needed it. I completely separated myself from the rest of black culture because I realized some time ago that your skin can be a crime of its own. <clears throat> the video you just watched was a clip of an unnecessarily violent arrest 
of Ju that Juwan Yours was subjected to in June of this year. This video recently came to light after the police officer, officers in question and cited an investigation into their Greensboro, North Carolina Police Department, but also stepped down from their posts, a rare occurrence when it comes to cases of police brutality, where unfortunately most times the victims are blamed for their attack. And they aren't there to defend themselves because someone took away the right to defend to ever do anything again. During the duration of the 16 minute long ordeal, it took the same route that most of these videos take. It started off mostly cordial. The police officer, Travis Cole, seemed to be doing the right thing, following protocol. As we get farther down the line, it escalates quickly. And even though Dewan keeps crying and saying, I'm not resisting, I'm not resisting, I am not resisting, Cole continues to forcefully hold him down. He punches Dewan in the face, directly over his eye. He punches his lip. He forces him on the planks to the front and the floor in front of his mother's front door and pushes him twice more punches him. He drags him to the ground on the front lawn of the house where he grew up and claims that he didn't cooperate. And he keeps repeating after each cry from Dewan's lips, you were resisting the whole time. Even though Dewan, as he's being assaulted, is still trying to cooperate, he was resisting. Even though he moves his body out of the way politely for the cop who's pressing down on the back of his neck so he could get his radio out from, the, um, from underneath him, he was resisting. Even though he answered all of their questions, and did all they asked, he was resisting. All because, and I might be wrong, a cop felt he should assert his power against a man who prior to this incident was sitting outside of his mother's house waiting for her to get home because he forgot his key. On July 6th, a video of Alton Sterling being s shot several times surfaced. He was on the ground being held by two police officers with no way to defend himself. Alton's death was one, number 114 only 186 days into 2016. When I told the boys I worked with, they thought the protest in Baton Rouge was stupid and that protesting anything was dumb. That statement, making a statement by blocking traffic was idiotic. They told me that the cause for justice for the 114 men whose lives were taken doesn't matter. It do, because to them, growing up with violence as an injustice is completely normal. Do you remember when you were a kid and you would watch, you were sit home, homesick from school? You would sit in front of the TV, watching whatever, and those commercials would come on. You know the ones with the sad little kids in Africa whose faces from the third world countries, and they would say for just a dollar a day you could feed them. It didn't matter to me, it wasn't in my country, but they were everywhere and they were all encompassing. Now their replacement is a quick breaking news video on the 6 o'clock news every time you turn on the TV. It's breaking news. An unarmed man or woman killed by a police officer but we're so darned accustomed to it that we change the channel and just find whatever's good. The Washington Post reported in May of 2015 that over 385 police shootings had occurred so far that year. That number works out to over two involved police shootings per day and rising. Police-involved shootings are so common that the Washington Post has a counter. This is our mainstream. Our mainstream is going onto Google News and searching the words police, black, shot, and gaining over 39 million results just in the news category. I mean, we're only a week into October 2016, and there's already been 22 documented cases of death in relation to police brutality in the United States. That's more people than days that we've had so far. It's been, that's been 836 so far this year. This stat I got from CBC, Daily Mail, The Washington Post, places that report on the stuff that matters. They report on stuff that matters to you, to me, to everyone. Stuff that should matter. How many people have to die for a single life to matter to everyone? And justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Martin Luther King.